Hi, I'm Pete, and this is Jimmy. We're homebrew consultants at Stubby's Texas Brewing, Inc., and on the web at txbrewing.com. Today, we're going to talk to you about kegging. We're going to show you some of the benefits, the equipment needed to get started, and we're going to show you how to keg your very first beer. And Jimmy, why don't you tell us a little bit about the benefits? Sure. There are a lot of benefits to kegging. Uh, the time it takes to sanitize and cleanse a keg versus 50 bottles for five gallon batch is tremendously smaller. I mean, if you can just sanitize one keg versus 50 bottles, I mean, that's gonna save a lot of time. Oh yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, you can taste your beer in three days versus three days, three days versus two weeks, which is, there's a big difference there. I'm in, man. Yeah, you know, you're always anxious to try your beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am too, yeah. I am too. You know, and you know, you can always, you know, there's a, a saying, you can take a small taste without any waste. You know, you don't have to open a bomber, you don't have to open a bottle that maybe you're saving for competition or to share with your friends. You can pour a pint for your neighbor or anybody else. You know, and you can do this in your kitchen, in your garage, your back porch. Or all three. I mean, or all three. I mean, <laughs> you're pouring your own beer at your own house with your own tap. That sounds like the way to go. We have a great assortment of equipment, and uh, we're going to talk about that next. Would you like to share a little bit about the equipment it takes to get started kegging? Absolutely. Okay, the first piece of equipment that you're going to need is a refrigerator or chest freezer to keep your beer cool. You can use a refrigerator uh, or, or a chest freezer for this process. The refrigerator would probably be a little more inexpensive. Basically, you just get one, take the shelves out, put your keg in there, put your CO2 tank, and, and go. Your upright freezer or chest freezer, the, the extra expense with that comes in an external temperature control, but we'll cover that in a next upcoming episode. Right. Uh, the next item that you'll need is a keg to put your beer in, to carbonate, and to dispense from. And there's a couple of different types. These are basically old soda kegs. There's a ball lock, which has a relief valve. It's a little taller, a little skinnier. And then the pin lock, which is a little shorter, does not have the relief valve. Jimmy, you wanna talk about a couple other items? Sure. There are three other components that are very necessary with kegging your beer. You have the CO2 tank, the regulator, and a way to dispense your beer. May it be a Cobra tap or a shank and faucet. Um, next, we're going to show you how to actually keg your own beer. Good. Awesome. First up, you need your finished beer, a clean and sanitized keg, and a ready bucket of star sand with an auto siphon and hosing. It's also a good practice to check the gravity before the transfer. For this lesson, we're going to focus on using a ball lock keg. These kegs come with a pressure release valve in the middle of the lid and have the in and out posts on either side. Each post has a poppet inside, along with a dip tube for the liquid out post. If you have a new keg, the first thing you want to do is check whether it's holding pressure or not. Then make sure you've cleaned it with a good cleanser and sanitized it with something like star sand before the first transfer. Also a good practice is to clean and sanitize and purge your kegs when not in use and checking the pressure lets you know if you have a seal leak to fix, which leads to our next step. Lubing your lid. A wise investment and trouble saver is a tube of keg lube and applying it with each cleaning in preparation to your new transfer. This is the stuff that can stop a leak and save you emptying an entire bottle of CO2 overnight. We suggest using a pair of surgical gloves or a couple of clean paper towels as this stuff can be really hard to wash off and be sure to sanitize. Now, another best practice is to purge the keg with CO2 before the transfer. So put the lid back on, then grab your gas line with your gas quick disconnect and attach it in the end post. On many kegs, the end post is either marked on the handle, has a star-shaped pattern base, or has grooves in the base. Fill the keg with a medium burst of CO2 and pull the pressure release valve to push out some of the oxygen. This creates a short-lived blanket of CO2 at the base that your transferred beer can remain under to reduce oxygen exposure. Finally, it's time to get your transfer going. First up, put your primary up higher than the keg and make sure your racking cane or auto siphon and hosing is sanitized. Running some sanitizer through the line is always a good idea. 
So grab your line with sanitized hands and put it into your keg while also placing the auto siphon in the fermenter. To minimize pulling tube into your keg, hold the base of the siphon several inches from the bottom of the fermenter. Now give it a good pump or two and try to keep from any splashing. Next up, it's time to remove the line, put the sanitized lid on the keg, and apply CO2. So another best practice is spraying down your lid area, post, and gas disconnect with StarSan. Then apply the gas, turn the pressure up to 30 PSI, and release the pressure a few times to purge any oxygen. Finally, spray the lid area with StarSan and check for any bubbling leaks. Give it two days at 33-35 degrees Fahrenheit, then drop the pressure to 10 to 12 PSI for picnic tap lines, or possibly 4 to 5 PSI for regular tap lines. Release the 30 PSI pressure and pour yourself your first draft. Pow!